Good morning. Welcome back. I hope you had a really good week. I'm really excited for the, this lesson today. It is the end of our study of the Minor Prophets. So let's have a word of prayer before we begin. <clears throat> our Heavenly Father, I just want to thank you and praise you for this lesson of how you um, instructed these prophets to guide your people and to give them wisdom. And Lord, I just pray that all the kids that are watching will take that wisdom and put it into their own lives, Lord, in ways to not only help them, but to glorify you. So Lord, we just ask for your Holy Spirit to help us to understand and to guide us into putting these practices into our lives. I just want to thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, well, here we go. <clears throat> Have you ever had a day that was all mixed up? So if you want to, you can try some of this, okay? How about this? Can you walk backwards from where you are to the next room? Try it. Okay. Or can you say this phrase backwards? Ready? Say this backwards. Welcome to Sunday school class. So what would that be? Class, school, Sunday, to welcome, right? <laughs> How about, can you clap your hands backwards? Or maybe some people might go like this. I don't know. So, backwards. Okay. Can you thumb through your Bible backwards? So, I guess that would be like, close your Bible and then thumb it this way you know, open it from page to page, or count to 10 backwards, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, right, try it, you know, sometimes think, yeah, we sometimes think if we do whatever we want, we will be happy, but something about that is backwards thinking, someone who gets everything they want can be very spoiled, right? And if you get to go first every time, you're going to think you should go first all the time. And if your parents spent all their extra money on you, you just might pitch a fit if they don't spend on what you think you should have. If you never think of what others wanted or needed, you probably won't have any friends. And the way to have joy is to put God first and others second, then you will know the best way to live and get along with others. Today, we're gonna to learn about putting our priorities in the right order. And do you know what a priority is? Hmm, well, a priority is what you think is most important. So if your priority is you, then you need to make some changes. And God's people made changes in their lives once they realized they had their priorities in the wrong order. So today we are going to learn about the message God gave to this prophet for the Jews called Haggai. The Jews had just returned to their homeland to rebuild the temple in Jerusalem, but they were becoming discouraged. And through Haggai, God reminded them that to make God a priority in their lives. So let's do a little bit of history here. So here I have a card and it has Abram and the year is 2090 BC. Okay. Remember, God chose Abram to be the father of a great nation. And while he had no children, God told him to leave his home in Ur and changed his name to Abraham. And God saw Abraham was a faithful man. So he made a covenant to give him and his descendants a special land. So we're going to put this right up here, Abram. Okay. Well, next I have a picture and it's labeled 1446 B.C. And Abraham's descendants, the Israelites, were enslaved in Egypt. God heard their cries for help and sent 10 plagues 
until the Pharaoh finally freed them. Moses led God's people to the promised land where they could love and serve God. Now remember how the Israelites got to Egypt. There was a famine. And just before the famine, the brothers of Joseph sold him into slavery. And God blessed him with such wisdom and discernment that he rose to second in command in Egypt after he was a slave. You know, can you believe it? And because of the famine, his brothers and his father Jacob came to Egypt and they prospered there and then eventually were enslaved. So there we have that. Now here I have 1,406 BC. So did the Israelites love and serve God? Did they? Sadly, no. They chose to go against him. Okay. Now, they did other things. They, if you notice here, there's like an idol here. They, they worship idols. They were breaking that first commandment with worshiping idols. <clears throat> and for hundreds of years, God sent prophets to warn his people to stop their sinning and to follow him. And, but they refused to listen and to follow his will. And they wanted their own way. They wanted God to do good things for them, but they still wanted to do what they wanted. Okay. And remember all the different prophets that we had, um, Micah and Obadiah, of what they were telling the people like to pay attention. So now our next one here is a king, Nebuchadnezzar in 586 BC. Well, who is this king? Was he Jewish? Nope. He was Babylonian. And God warned through all his prophets that if the people didn't straighten up, that they were going to be taken over. And Babylon was the empire of the time. And they came and took over the Israelites. They grabbed all the good, smart, strong Israelites, and they took them back to Babylon, which they would have been slaves. And they destroyed, they destroyed the temple. They took all the precious um, items in the temple and they took it all back to Babylon. So that was who he is. And then our next one here, this is an important thing. You know, sometimes God use, uses people. They, they might not believe in him or acknowledge him as God, but he uses them in his own way to benefit his people. So after Babylon, there was another empire called Persia. And they came and they conquered Babylon. And so now we have a new empire and a new king called King Cyrus. Sometimes he's also called Darius. So he took over the country and announced that all the Jews could return home. And that was amazing because that was part of the prophecy years ago that God would bring his people back. And he did. Now you have to realize from this time until this time, there were a lot of people involved. There was Esther, and we have Daniel, and Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego. Like all these stories are going on um, before and after. So that way you can have a connection of, of where it's all going. Okay. Well, he was very, very generous. You know, first he allowed them to go back, and then. He gave them, had others give them silver and gold and supplies for the journey, as well as animals and other offerings for the temple. King Cyrus himself presented valuable gold and silver items and 5,400 items in all that King Nebuchadnezzar, remember King Nebuchadnezzar had stolen from the temple, was given back. Can you imagine 5,400 items? Wow. Well, now we are, this is 538. This is now 536 BC. And this guy has a funky name, Zerubbabel. 
Okay. Well, he was a, the judge in the area, and he was the main leader of the group of God's people. Can you imagine their war? There were 42,360 people that he was in charge of, okay? And in addition, there were 7,337 servants and 200 singers. They took with them 736 horses, 245 mules, 435 camels, 6,720 donkeys, and traveled back to Jerusalem. Zerubbabel, Joshua, and his brothers, and the priests began working on the altar so they could offer sacrifices to God. Now, this Joshua isn't the Joshua of Jericho. This is a different Joshua in the priestly family. Now, so the first thing was first. They wanted to rebuild the altar, altar so they could sacrifice offerings to God. So, <clears throat> these people were so happy to be back in their homeland that they brought free will offerings to God. The Jews knew God brought them back to their country and they were thankful. They wanted to see the temple rebuilt in the second year. I mean, the second month of the second year that they were back. Zerubbabel and Joshua led the people to lay the foundation for the temple. All the Levites, now remember the, Le the Levites were the official priests, <clears throat> who were 20 years or older were put in charge. For two years they worked on the temple, but the enemies of the Jews wanted to stop the work. They don't want it to happen. And they did stop it for 16 long years. And God's temple lay in ruins. So my next thing here is Haggai. Haggai is the minor prophet. And he has a book in the Old Testament. Okay. Well, God sent a message through his prophet Haggai. The people had returned to rebuild the temple. But they became distracted by other things. Isn't it easy to get distracted? I know myself. I set out to accomplish a goal and I get distracted so easily. Well, the people were all about their own business. Hmm, right? They were building their own houses and doing things that mattered to them. And Haggai called the people back to what should be first in their lives. God. Some of the trouble they were having. They weren't having enough food, um, trouble with their clothing or their shelters, all because they neglected to put God first. They had fancy houses when God's own house laid in ruins. Um, Haggai reminded the people God must come before anything else. The good news is this. God's people listened to Haggai's message. Zerubbabel and Joshua gathered the people again and they started to work on the temple. So finally, after four years, the temple in 516 BC was finished. The people, the priests, and the Levites dedicated the temple to God with a grand celebration. They offered sacrifices to God and praised him for his help. Wow. That is amazing. A good history here that we can, we can learn from. Well, we know that God sent Haggai as his messenger to remind the people to make him a priority in their lives. And that message is for us too. Remember, priorities are things that are important to us. And the way we can tell if something is a priority is the time we spend doing it. You know, and that's true. Like today, I see so many people, young people, parents, they're constantly on their phone, constantly. And really, in reality, that's not really good. A phone should be just used, you know, to talk with or to receive the information that you need. So, but some people are on it all the time. And I'm, with you're on the phone all the time, you know there's going to be some things that are going to be neglected. And some things that should take priority over the phone. So that's just one thing I want you to observe and look at. Well, now, 
Some things that are priorities to us may be similar to everyone your age, like the phone, while others may be different. And as we grow older, our priorities will change. However, one thing that should always be a priority in our lives, and no matter what our age is, should be our relationship with our Heavenly Father. Okay. So I have a story here to tell you about CJ. Remember all this month it's been CJ and, and his sister Sarah and all? Well, today, CJ couldn't wait to get off the school bus and head to the soccer field. Tryouts were this week, and he wanted to make the soccer team more than anything. He loved playing soccer. He played or practiced every free minute. Just as he ran into the house, his mom reminded him that they were headed to visit his grandmother at the nursing home. What? I don't want to go, CJ growled. I have to practice for the soccer tryouts. Some of my friends are meeting at the field to kick the ball around. Sorry, but not today. You know, we always go to the nursing home on Thursdays, his mother reminded him. CJ made a big scene and pouted all the way there. Later that week, CJ tried out and made the soccer team. He was super excited. His days were spent practicing, playing, or thinking about soccer. Just as CJ was rushing out the door for another practice, Sarah reminded him that they were supposed to meet at church on Saturday to help wash cars to raise money for an orphanage in Kenya. I don't have time for that, CJ spouted. I have to keep practicing. We're on a winning streak and we're having an extra practice. I don't want to miss it. Well, I guess you could give some of your allowance money for the special offering, his mother suggested. CJ was quiet. What? Why do I have to give my money? He asked. You know I've been saving up for a new soccer ball. You just got a new soccer ball when you started the season, his mother reminded him. I know, but I found one that is way better, and I have to have it. I need it, he announced as he headed out the door to practice soccer. Wow. What are your thoughts about CJ's priorities? Hmm. You know... It is probably the same type of priorities that most kids have to deal with, depending on their parents and what their own priorities are. Um, especially when you want to be involved in something and you have church duties. And you can come up with excuses like, oh, I can do church duties next week. Or, oh, so-and-so's there, so I don't need to be there. But I don't think that's what God wants you to, to think. God wants you to be in his house, helping and reaching out to others around you and in his area, okay? So you come to youth group uh, and you learn stuff. Some of you come to the gate. Um, some of you come to the Good News Club. So at least you're learning about God and getting to meet people, and there's ways that you can um, help others through all that. But what does God say about making right priorities? Well, if you notice here, I have the book that we're looking at, Haggai, and the first scripture that we are going to look at is Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. And let's see what God says about making the right priorities. Well, the first one here in 33 says, But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Wow, that is a really good scripture. Seek first his kingdom, right? God's things. And then the next scripture here is. 37 to 39, Jesus replied, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. Wow. Okay. You know, setting good priorities can help us decide what is best each day. Putting God and others before you is God's plan. And, you know, even though CJ was on the soccer team, it's okay to be on the soccer team. I know you think it's a bad thing, but it's a good thing. But if he would have listened to his mother and not grumbled and complained, not only would he honor her mom, his mom, but he would have glorified God in his obedience. And he would be blessed by helping others. So we need to keep everything at a balance. We really need to strive for that. Now, how can we remember 
to keep God first, then serve others, and then ourselves. Well, you remember last week, um, the other week we did frog, fully rely on God. Well, this week we're going to do joy, J-O-Y, Jesus, others, and you. So that would be one way to remember. Okay, well, let's take some of these down here. Okay, because we got to put our other poster up. Okay, here we go. What I should do is like last week and just take them off and let them fall, right? <laughs> and last one. Okay. So here is our theme, oops, our poster theme for this month. You remember? It's from Micah chapter 6, verse 8. And what does the Lord require of you? but to do justice and to love kindness and to walk humbly with your God. Now, remember, this is a different translation. Some translations might say mercy. Okay. So we have learned that he wants us to do justice or be okay. And yeah. We have learned he wants us to do justly or justice and love mercy and kindness. Today, let's focus on the last part. Walk humbly with God. So what do you think it means to walk with God? Hmm, what does it mean? Well, to walk with God, we need to follow his way. To walk with someone, don't you need to be close enough to? to listen and to talk with, and you get to know them, and you ask questions, you find what they like and don't like. So the Bible compares walking with God to being close to him. So when we are close to someone, we listen and we talk and we share our feelings and we help each other. We should have that same relationship with God. And what do you think it means to walk humbly? Hmm. It means you recognize your need for God and you don't know the best way to live and you need someone wise to guide you and that's God. A humble person reads the Bible so he or she can get to know God better and God made us and he knows us and the best way for us to go and so we want to walk closely with him so we can listen and obey him. Well, then also this month, we are talking to be a difference maker, okay, a difference maker. So let's review a little bit here. We have Obadiah, remember him? And he was the one telling the Edomites that they were being awful to God's people. Remember what the Edomites were doing? They were... Um, not helping them to defend them against the Babylons, Babylonians, excuse me. And they were taking whatever was left of the Israelites for, their, for themselves. And then any Israelite that escaped, they would capture them and hand them over to the Babylonians. It was awful. So we learned the first week that we should help others. Okay. And then the next week we had Micah. And this was God telling Micah to tell the people to stop being horrible to each other. The Israelites were not being kind to each, to each other. And they were cheating each other and, and being nasty. And God said, this is, this is it. Okay, so our lesson for that was to treat others as you would like to be treated. And then last week, we had Nahum. Remember, and that was about forgiveness. And that is something that is very hard to do at times. And that is why we need the help of the Holy Spirit to give us the strength and the ability to forgive others. Because depending on what people have done to us, it might be very hard. But with God's help and just realizing we need to lay it at the foot of the cross, 
and let God handle it, that will give us peace, right? We won't be bitter or angry, and that's not good to have. So forgiveness is not only for the other person, but it's also for yourself. And so today with Haggai, we learned to make right priorities, right? Okay, make sure it's God first, others, and then yourself. Or the word joy, J-O-Y, Jesus, others, and you. So, <clears throat> today we learned that we are to make right priorities. And what are your top priorities? Is it to do everything you want? Some people think if they put themselves first, they will be happy. Is that true? Mm, not necessarily. What are some things people who put themselves first might say? Well, this is mine. I worked for it. I did this. I deserve this. Usually those people are selfish, lonely, and unhappy. So. What did we learn what the Bible said our priority should be? Well, let's look back here in Matthew 22, verse 37 to 39. It says, love the Lord with your God, with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. And this is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. Well, love God first. And love your neighbor as you love yourself. What do you think it means to love God with all your heart, soul, and mind? Wow, that's tough, isn't it? Well, your mind especially. Love God with your mind. Because there are things you're probably putting into your mind or seeing that is not honoring to God. So we got to be careful with what we're watching and what we're listening to <coughs> and what we're reading. <coughs> Cooper. Cooper, Cooper. <laughs> so anyway, we got to be careful in the same way with our heart. What does that mean, our heart? Well, hey, we are fickle people and we fall in love and out of love with people and things and items that we just have to be very careful. And, and your soul, it's your spirit. You just got to make sure you're taking care of your spirit. Okay. So. <clears throat> putting Jesus first and following God's words will bring you the most joy. God made you and knows what will make you joyful. Get as close to him as you can. Love him with all your heart. Spend time with him and do what he asks. Number two, love others. Thinking about others will actually make you happier. What are some ways to love others this week? Think about it. Is it helping out your mom or your dad? Helping with your siblings? Maybe picking up? Or maybe when you're done eating supper, wash the dishes. Or maybe pull some weeds or cut the grass. There's a lot of things you can do. Clean up your room. You know? So, that think about that. <laughs> now, Bouncing time with God and helping others, schoolwork, sports, chores, church activities, and other activities can be hard to figure out some weeks. But we must do the most important things first. Then we can figure out how to do the other important things. So do you think you can make loving God and loving others your top priority? So just as the people changed their priorities when Haggai gave them God's message. There is always a choice. And remember that it's always a choice. When we hear God's message and then they have been completely focused on themselves and neglected God in his house. Okay, so that's how they were. They were completely focused on themselves. And isn't it easy for us to neglect God and others when we spend all of our time and money in ourselves? That's so true. So this week, I would like you to put God and others first in order to experience real joy. So as you're out and about and doing things around the house, just be aware of what God is doing 
and that maybe God is putting you in a certain place to do what he wants you to do, whether it's helping your parents or helping your siblings or maybe even a neighbor. So just be aware of that. So I hope you enjoyed this lesson. Um, next Sunday, we'll be starting a new unit. Well, not a new unit, but a new section. So if you have any questions, you can just um, email me at Twin Valley Alliance Sunday School. Anything else? Um, as far as I know, there's going to be a meeting in August of all the volunteers and helpers. And we're going to try to put a plan in, in action for Sunday school. So we'll just see how that goes. And our prayers are with everybody. And I just pray that this new way of doing school will be good for all of us. So just keep that in prayer too. So until next week, I hope you have a good time. Take care of yourselves. And we'll see you back here. Bye-bye.